Dr. Ben Newman here. Uh, this is Ask Dr. Ben, where I use my experience as a coronavirus researcher to try to answer your uh, mostly COVID-themed questions. All right, next question is a three-parter, and uh, they're all pretty good parts. Yeah, this is from Katie, and how are you doing? All right, so let's see. Uh, thank you for your continued work to keep us updated and push a little sanity out into the world. Well, I try. Yeah. <laughs> Here are some claims I'm reading on social media. Oh, boy. Yeah, just from the start of this, this does not sound good, does it? Uh, um, anyway, that I was curious about with regard to specific problems people have with the vaccines. How would Dr. Ben answer these claims? And so skipping ahead, I'm looking at all these claims, and these are all things that people say, but not things that particularly happen. So, yeah, I would file this under well-intentioned or poorly-intentioned, I can't tell, nonsense. <laughs> but that part I can tell. Um, but let's go through uh, claim by claim. Claim by claim. Just real fast. Uh, okay, so uh, number one, spike protein doesn't remain only on the surface of cells. It breaks free. Free spike protein is cytotoxic. Yes and no and potentially, but not to a big enough extent that I think it's uh, worth worrying about. So on the one hand, everything that people are worried about is stuff that happens in other vaccines and is considered safe. Um, a percentage of every flu vaccine is going to break down or be activated or will go outside of the muscle where it was originally injected and you know what it's okay yeah <laughs> it's okay uh the human body is uh super tough and resilient and the point of a vaccine is to find some antigen presenting cells cells that will show a little bit of the spike to the rest of the immune system anywhere else that the spike goes it's basically just going to be lost and if there was a way to target the spike just to uh, cells that are going to interact with the immune system, potentially you could put in less vaccine and get the same or greater results. So, But that's something that is tricky. And if you messed it up, you could wipe out somebody's immune system. So yeah, it, it's something where I would want to see a lot of very carefully developed science before uh, we went in and tried really targeting vaccines like that. But it's certainly something that should be possible and um, uh, that I, I know I have read about people working on this. I just haven't read enough of the papers to give you anything like an informed opinion. Um, um, but yeah, uh, uh, so uh, it's no big deal. And the other thing that um, you can look at are that some of the early papers actually looked for antibodies to different parts of the spike. So there, the spike is normally cut in different places and the versions of the spike that are used in vaccines actually have some changes in them that prevent them from being cut in those places, at least in the normal scheme of things. So the vaccines are designed so that they won't have parts that come loose because th that doesn't really help anything, um, doesn't lead to a better vaccine, uh, uh, yeah any demonstrable way so yeah not a big deal probably doesn't happen much there are specific countermeasures in the vaccine to stop it from happening and uh don't, don't worry about that one <laughs> let's say number two all right the, the vaccine and the spike protein don't remain localized uh, in the deltoid muscle uh, as intended the, there again yeah they're injected there because, um, to some extent, yeah, you could inject it into any major muscle. Uh, you could inject it into people's butts, but they would have to take their pants off for you to do that effectively. And that makes people feel weird. And so we put it into an arm because it's like the butt of your, you know, shoulder, basically. Yeah, it's a decent uh, sized chunk of muscle uh, where you can get reasonable... Um, uh, chance that the vaccine will run into the right sorts of uh, tissue resident antigen presenting cells. Yeah, that's all there is to it. So, um, you know what? I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure if the vaccine is only um, allowed to be injected into an arm or if there is latitude. But if you're super worried about it, <laughs> you can talk to your doctor 
and they may have a way to uh, inject it into your butt. And if that makes you feel better, yeah, buddy, yeah, go wild. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would depend on what is uh, allowed under the current FDA licensing, their uh, emergency use authorization, and uh, the amount of latitude that doctors would have uh, if they're the ones that are doing the administration. I would think that uh, if you're just going to a nurse or a technician at uh, sort of a pop-up clinic, they would not have the same latitude uh, to be able to vary what they're doing at all. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, again, uh, I don't think it's a thing that happens meaningfully. I don't think there's any problem there. It's um, all of your body is connected. Your muscles are full of blood vessels because your muscles need lots of oxygen in order to function as muscles. Um, and so, yeah, anywhere that you put something in the body, a certain percentage of it will go to other uh, parts of the body. And I think we freak out a little bit when we hear that ovaries are one of the spots where uh, it sometimes goes, or testes. But mostly it's going to go to the liver and kidneys because their job is to filter the blood and they act like a great big sponge in pulling a lot of stuff out of the blood. And so uh, that's where nearly all of it's going to end up. So again, that's what your liver is for. In this case, you might want to ask your liver to kindly just let it circulate a couple times. Maybe we can get a little bit more uh, effect out of it. But um, yeah, there's no talk in the livers. They, they're just going to, liver's going to liver. Yeah. All right. Uh, point three, um, spike breaks through the blood brain barrier. That's a weird one. So the blood brain barrier is this concept there are actually lots of things that break through the blood brain barrier um and it happens more often than you think but there is still some semblance of a barrier there so the idea is that the brain is a protected compartment of the body and that normally when you get infections in other parts of the body it doesn't spread to the brain and normally when you get immune responses in other parts of the body the immune response does not go into the tissue of the brain it just stays on the blood vessel and kind of goes through but doesn't really touch anything or do any damage there are specific cases where all of that stuff uh is uh is wrong we're, we're talking about like the major the, the main thing that happens in a normal case versus uh weird cases the spike can cause a virus with a spike they'll make lots of spikes on a virus there we go to fuse with a cell and so potentially that would deliver components into the blood vessels that are lining the blood brain barrier um i don't know what people are thinking in terms of spike protein breaking through the blood brain barrier i think that may be something um that uh people are imagining would happen or that uh people are worried might happen but don't have any evidence that it actually does happen and uh i don't i don't see that as a realistic uh thing to worry about yeah i don't see how it would happen or yeah where i know some of the um people that are currently being investigated for touting misinformation about covid online have said stuff like this and i think it's more a misunderstanding of um some of the science that they're not quite as close to as far as i can tell i i, I don't think there's any real substance to this so one spike protein goes breaks free um mostly doesn't happen Two, vaccine goes other places. Always happens with every vaccine. Not a big deal. Uh, three, the spike protein mysteriously breaks through the blood-brain barrier. I don't think that happens. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. That's the uh, short and uh, somewhat longer version of, uh, yeah, uh, the answers to these questions. And uh, general, uh, yeah, the information that you get from social media isn't always the best is it <laughs> which i think you're recognizing in putting this question uh, in front of me so uh thanks very much and uh stay safe from both misinformation and covid uh all the best this has been asked dr ben